Hello and welcome to this workshop, Introduction to Library Resources. This is a video version of the workshop which you can attend um, online. You can register to attend the workshop online through our library workshops calendar or this, like I say, is a video version of that workshop that you can watch. First, I'd like to start with a really big welcome. Welcome to this video, to this workshop and welcome to your library here at the University of Derby. What this session is going to do is it's going to provide you with an introduction to our library resources that we have available to you. We're not going to go into lots of detail about how to use them. We're going to give you the information that you need to go away and find them and, and the tools you need to start exploring them yourself. My name's Naomi. I work in the library, um, in the library skills team, and I'll be doing this video. So these are things that we're going to introduce. We're going to look at the library website. We're going to look at library search, which is the way of searching most of our library resources. We'll take a look at the library catalogue. We'll look at some reading lists, your subject guides, our workshop calendar. Like I say, that's where you go if you want to register for the online version of this workshop and where to go for further support. So starting off with the library website, and I'm actually going to share my screen at this point. So here we have the library homepage, the homepage of the library website. This web page you can get to in a variety of different ways. The direct web address is derby.ac.uk forward slash library. That will get you straight there. There's a link at the bottom of the main university homepage. If you scroll right to the bottom of the main university homepage, you will see a link that says library. There's a link through in Udo. Um, or you could pop Derby Uni Library into your favourite search engine and it will probably pop up. Here we have library homepage. I'm going to just show you a couple of things on the homepage itself and then talk through some of those other resources that I spoke about earlier. First, I'd just like to point out, and we'll talk about this um, later on in the where to go for further help section, we've got our chat box pops up. So at the moment, the library chat is, is live, it's staffed. We've got a little green chat box here and we've got the option to chat or, or not. If I click the chat now, I get a box that comes through that lets me pop my name, my email address in and the question that I've got and start a chat with a member of library staff. So just highlight that there. I'm going to click it down for the moment because we don't want that at the moment. Other things just to mention about the library website itself. If we scroll down, we've got our opening hours. So if you are wanting to visit the library in person, check the opening hours for the library site that you'd like to visit here. The other thing I wanted to show you here is this using the library section. So if we click here, we've got lots of information about using the library um, in person, essentially. So we've got information about borrowing books, loans and fines, returning your books, reservations, all those sorts of things. Oh, my chat box has popped back up again. It's ever keen as the chat box. So <laughs> whenever, wherever you are on the library website, you should have that chat box there. So you can always pop on and ask a question of library staff. So lots of information there about um, coming and using the library in person. And do take a look. These are all drop downs here that will give you lots of information about um, accessing our library resources, particularly in person in the library. I'm going to talk through this search the library box. Now, what this box does is it takes you through to our um, discovery tool, which is called Library Plus. What Library Plus does is it allows you to search most of what we have access to in the library. It doesn't search absolutely everything, but it searches the vast majority. So it's a really good place to start for any search. And we've got the search box here right on the library homepage, so we don't need to do anything else. We can just pop our search term in and get going. The example I'm going to use is studying at university. I've popped in quotation marks. What those quotation marks mean is that it's going to search for that phrase as a whole, those three words together in that order. If we didn't put the quotation marks on, it would search for studying, and it would search for at, and it would search for university. By putting the quotation marks on, we're searching for that exact phrase, studying at university. And if I click search, here we go. Here's my result list in Library Plus. So you can see my search term here, studying at university, is at the top. I can pop different search terms in there. Now Now I'm into Library Plus, I can use it. I don't need to go back through the main library homepage. And that's just your really good entry point into this search tool. 
A few things to mention here, again this is a brief introductory thing, I'm not going to talk you through exactly how to use it, but go ahead, pop search terms into that box and see what happens because you're not going to break it at all. Um, and we do have other workshops that go into much more detail about um, Library Plus and how to use it, so keep an eye out for those on the Library Workshops calendar if it's something that you want to explore further. But just to highlight here, um, on our results page, we have first off an academic journal article. So you can see here we've got little icons and then the words as well that tell us what the different resource types are. So like I say, Library Plus is searching so much stuff, it's searching the vast majority of what we have access to. So first off we've got an academic journal and we've got a green get full text button here and that will take us through to the full text of that journal. Nice and easy, click on the get full text button, it will take you through. The next one we're down, we've got an ebook. And again, this is an ebook, it's an electronic resource. We've got our get full text button that will take us straight through and access that ebook. And the same in the one down below. And this next one, um, fourth result here, is a book, it's a print book. And it will tell us just briefly um, where that print book is. And so it's a, this one's at Britannia Mill Library, we've got the shelf mark there. We can click view more. Um, and see the other libraries that we hold it or we can click this link here that will take us straight through to the um, proper library catalog record for this book. I'll show you the catalog next so I won't click on um, that at the moment but that will give us more information about the availability of the book in the library. So it is a good idea to check the availability of the book before you make a special trip in to go and get it. Um, so going through to that full catalog record it can be really helpful. As you can see here, the status is view catalogue record, so we need to go to the catalogue record to see the status of that book. And that is Library Plus. Like I said, we've got two workshops that run about Library Plus. We've got um, finding and using journal articles with Library Plus and Library Plus Advanced Search. So both those are really good to check out if you want more information, more experience, more practice in searching at Library Plus. But like I say, there's nothing to stop you going in and um, popping in some search terms and having a play around. You can see there's lots and lots of buttons you can click on the left hand side um, to narrow down your search and really make it um, specific to what you're after. Right, I'm going to go back to the library homepage now. There we go, back to the main library homepage. So the library catalogue, that's what I'm going to show you next. And you can see again, we've got a direct link here from the library catalogue um, in this search the library box. So if I click on that, this takes us through to our library catalogue. Now the library catalogue is really good for searching print books, so the books we have physically in the library, and our eBooks. It's good for those because it searches very detailedly within them, so it'll search chapter titles, for example, within them, and we've got that information straight away about where the book is and whether or not it's available. I'm going to do that same search. Oh, I spell it right. Studying at university. And I use my quotation marks. That's doing exactly the same job as it did in Library Plus. It's looking for that phrase, studying at university. And you can see the books it's pulled up have all got that phrase, studying at university, there in the title. As we scroll down, the results will become less relevant and we'll start to see ones where it's not in the title, but it might be, as I say, in a chapter title or in the description or something like that. The library catalogue will also search the titles of our print journals, so those are the journals that we have physically in the library. It will search the titles, so your title of the journal might be the Journal of Psychology, for example. What it won't do is search within those journals, so it won't search the articles of the journals. So again, if you know that you want to um, look at a print journal that's here in the library in physical form, pop the title of the journal into the library catalogue and that will search for it for you. If you want to search for articles on a particular topic, you need to be using Library Plus like I showed you just now. As I said before, the catalogue holds print books and ebooks, and you can see um, on this result list it will tell you what type of book in the results. So this top one here is a paperback, um, another paperback, and this one um, down at the bottom here is an ebook. I can also use my filters on the left hand side, so if I just want to see ebooks, I can click this filter here and I will just see ebooks that are available. Alternatively, as you can see, I can filter by the location of the library, so where the book is um, in, the, in the university libraries, um, and subject, other things like that. 
If this is a book, this top one that I'm interested in, that I want to access and look at, I can click this All Formats and Editions button. And what that will do is it will show me every sort of copy we have of the book, whether that's a previous edition or in this case, whether it's an ebook as well. So you can check by using that All Formats and Editions button exactly what your options are with regards to this book. I'm going to just click into this print record, so I've got my paperback here, not my ebook down here, my paperback up the top, and click on that record. This will give me more information about the book, so this is the description, and if I scroll down it will show me what copies we've got available and where. So this book we've got one available in the Study Skills Centre and two available, at, one available at Buxton, in the Study Skills Centre at Buxton, and two available at Caddison Road. It's always a good idea to click down. Um, because that will give you more information again. It will tell you the loan type of the book that is available. So it might be that the one that's available is a reference copy and you won't be able to take it out. Clicking down just lets you check that it is in fact a loanable copy. Um, and like I said, I can do that with both of those, see my shelf mark and see whether or not it's available. This will also show you copy the, copies of the book that are out on loan. So if it says that there's none available, have a click down and see if there are any ones that are out on loan that are due back soon. The shelf mark here will tell you where to find that book on the shelf. So if you make a note of that number, um, that tells you where on the shelf to look for that particular book. The numbers work, it's the Dewey Decimal System, and it works like a decimal point. So 378.17 is the number that you're looking for to find that book on the shelf. We've also got the option to reserve the item. If I click on that, it will ask me for my P number, my borrower number. Ah, it says borrower number. I'm very used to calling it a P number. Your borrower number will be on your student card. It starts with a P and then it's got a number. It may have an X at the end. When you're popping your number in, don't include the P, but if there is an X, do include the X. So you never include the P, but if there's an X on the end, you always pop the X in. That's written here, so you don't have to remember that. But if you're repeatedly typing your number in and it's saying it's not working, just have a check that you are following these instructions here, that you're not putting your P in, but you are putting an X in, if there's an X there. Right, let's go back. Also, just to mention on the library catalogue, we've got a link here to my account. Again, this is going to ask me for that P number, so the same rules apply. If I log in here, it will show me what books I have out on loan, when they're due back, and we have auto renewal, so books will renew automatically as no one else, and as long as no one else has recalled them. But it lets you keep an eye on that and check when your book's due back, if there are any recalls, and just check that that auto renewal is going smoothly. Right, like I say, this is a whistle stop tour. Let's go back to the library homepage. The next thing I want to show you is reading lists. Now, most modules will have a reading list and generally you would access that through course resources rather than through the library homepage. So when you're on course resources, you're on your module pages, you've got all your module information there, there should be a link to your reading list if there's one for your module. And like I said, there generally is. You can get them through to them through the library website as well though. Um, which I will show you now. If we click this reading list button, you can pop in your module title, the module code if you know it, um, into this search box and it will bring them up. I'm not going to show you one now because they all look slightly different depending on the different module that they're associated with. But just to note with these, what they do is they show you the recommended reading for the module and they will contain direct links to the library resources. So if it's a print book, you need to be looking for a direct link to the library catalogue that will link you straight back to that book record in the library catalogue like I was just showing you. Or if it's an electronic resource, there will be a view online button that will take you straight through to that electronic resource. So again, nice and easy, direct links to where you need to get to. But do remember your reading list is your recommended reading, your, um, your reading that's been put together specifically for that module, but it won't be everything that we hold on that subject. So you need to be using these other tools we've got to search the wider library resources to make sure that you're getting everything that you need, particularly for your assignments. Back to the library homepage. Next thing I'm going to show you is the subject guides. Now these are linked to here under this help and support menu. And I'm just going to click on that. So the subject guides, we've got guides here that are specifically um, written for each subject. 
So to access these, we've got our broad subject areas here. And if I scroll down, you can see there's lots and lots of them there. I'm going to click on Humanities and Journalism as my broad area. And then I've got my specific guides within that. So we'll just click on American Studies, that being the first one that comes up. And you can see here we've got lots and lots of information about library resources for American Studies. So we've got information about finding books, ebooks, articles, images and videos, key subject resources for that subject, useful websites, we've got information about referencing, um, lots and lots of information there. So do take the time to find the um, subject guide for your subject and see what information is available to you there. Let's go back. There we go. Back to the main library homepage. The last key resource I'm going to show you today is our workshop calendar. So that's here in the middle, um, and this links you through to all the academic and research skills workshops that we have. I'm going to click on it. When I'm recording this video, um, it's, it's in the summer because I'm being prepared, and we haven't actually got our workshops loaded on for um, the first semester yet of the year. So I'm going to click on it. We've got one event coming up, and um, that's on the 26th of August. It's the 19th of August as I record this now. Um, but it's looking a bit blank at the moment. But when you are looking at this, um, hopefully when you're starting your course, when everything's up and running, this will be full of exciting workshops that you can access. Um, so so do, don't take my word for it. Go and have a look at what workshops there are and what you'll be able to, um, to go along and attend. We have got this one here, so I can demonstrate. We can click on the workshop title, and we've got an option to register for the workshop here. Now. Registering for the workshops is a really good idea because what we do is we record the workshops and we send the links out to everyone that's registered for that workshop. So if you want to attend the workshop but you can't make that particular time or, or you sign up for it and then you don't manage to make it on time or whatever, as long as you've registered, you'll be sent a link to the recording. So registering is a really good idea for the workshops. Also on this calendar, we've got, so, so our library workshops cover all the um, library resources that I've just been talking about. As I said earlier, there's a workshop on using Library Plus, um, all sorts going on. We've also got um, workshops on skills, so skills like academic writing, note-taking, things like that. We've got a whole wide range of skills support and information that um, is outside the scope of this session to cover. We do have another session called Introduction to Skills Resources, um, which you can again sign up for on this workshop's calendar, or there's a video recording version as well that you can watch. And that covers all the skills resources that we have available to you to help you with your study. So don't forget about those. There we go, back to the main library homepage. The last thing I wanted to cover is just the further support that you've got. So where do you go next if you need more help? So there's a wide range of ways to get in touch with the library. I'm just going to pop back up the library chat because that is, as I say, is there. If this goes red, it means that there's no one there at the moment to answer the chat. Um, the chat is staffed 9 to 5, Monday to Friday, I believe, um, UK time. If it's red, you can click on it and submit a question. So you're not doing a live chat, but you can still submit your question and someone will get back to you when, when the chat is staffed again. So there's that. We've got our library contact details here, our email address, library.ace.uk. We've got the telephone number there that you can ring. We've got library help. Here we go. Here is our library help. Page. So this is frequently asked questions. You can search um, topics here and you can select a topic of the ones that we've got in, but you can type in your search words and it will bring up um, frequently asked questions related to those search terms. So a really good place to start if you need um, quick information. You can see some of the examples here, um, opening hours, do I need to book a slot to use the printer? How do I return my library books? All those things, how do I collect reservations? They're all there. Also you've got your live chat there too, so you can use that. Like I said, the live chat's everywhere. There's no escaping for live chat. Um, so that library help page is there as well. Let me get back to the main homepage. Last few things to mention, because there's lots of places for further support. Um, we are on Twitter at Derby Uni Library. We're also on Instagram at Derby Uni Library, so you can follow those and keep up to date. And if you wanted to get in touch with us using those platforms, then you can. 
And I think that's most of the ways to get in touch with the library. Again, like I said, the workshops are a really good place to go for further help because they cover these subjects in more detail. So it might be that if you got in touch with the library um, through the live chat, they'd be able to give you some, some information to help you with your query. But they might say, actually, really, you need to be attending this workshop because the workshops are, have got all that, that more detailed, in-depth information. So thank you very much for watching this video. Like I say, you're more than welcome to attend the workshop, um, if the, the equivalent workshop. You can sign up for that online or any of our other workshops. Um, I hope that you found it, like I say, a useful starting point for your use of the library resources. I'm very aware we've not gone into detail about any of them, but go away, find them, use them, get used to them, see how they work, play about with them, ask us questions, and all the very best um, for your studies as you start them and as you complete them throughout the course of your studies. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>